Hello. Um, I thought I would uh, record a, a video because um, and post it up. I think I've recorded a few videos since I last posted one, but I didn't post them because I wasn't satisfied um, uh, <clears throat> for one reason or another. I think basically, you know, I kind of started filming a game and I didn't finish it and I thought it wouldn't be very interesting to have something that looked like it was going to be finished but then wasn't. So, um, but I, <clears throat> I'm posting this because A, it's been a long, long time since I have, I think getting on for a year since I posted a video. And it's not that I haven't been playing games. I have been playing games, only solo, unfortunately. But um, I just, I was finding it kind of too much hassle with, uh, you know, everything else that was going on in my life to, to gain any joy from um, posting all the videos and going through all the, not necessarily stuff to do with that so um i don't think i got any subscribers that kind of like except maybe one <laughs> who are hanging on to like anything that i do but um and i really need to get up to date with linking my videos to like entries on board game geek and and in the game box stuff like that so that um they could be helpful to more people but um Anyway, be all that as it may, um, a fellow um, video wargamer called uh, who has a channel called MJ Lions. So I'm subscribed to it, so you can find it through the my subscribers there. Um, he has a, a channel as well, and uh, for anybody who's a wargamer interested in thoughtful content, you should go and check out his channel. Now he ha has been playing some of the uh, TCS, the gamers. Um, I think it's got a frozen hell. He posted a video, a few videos of that, and uh, coincidentally, I had just decided to break out Leros. This is my first ever TCS game. I kind of played a few turns of Black Wednesday some years ago, but never really um, had the opportunity to get into TCS yet. But I absolutely love the gamers Civil War battle series and their Napoleonic battle series. Because I, I um, especially as a solitaire gamer, I think it, but I, I can't wait to play one of them opposed. The uh, orders writing is wonderful because um, you really get the f sense of um, putting men and units into battle and um, pl planning an attack and tr and then seeing how the attack get plans out rather than just kind of like gaming a game um taking every available opportunity that might not be available on a real battlefield but anyway so um mj lands uh i mentioned that i had leros out and he said oh he'd be interested in some content on that so here it is um this is uh one of the kind of longest games i own you could say it's um it's three map sheets long so uh i don't know the dimensions but you know it's kind of that standard dimension and i'm sorry about the lighting at the back there i can't improve it without massive glare um so one two three sections and i found it this a particularly interesting war game in the sense that often in war games you have that um the end edge of map syndrome units that go off the edge of map are either eliminated or, or deemed you know completely um vaporized or whatever they can't come back because the rules for that would be too complicated and, and open to sort of or open to um mismanagement so if you step you know 100 yards this way sorry guys you're gone <laughs> that's the end of the story here that situation is completely natural because you can't quite see but you have the edge of the island and then there's like a quarter of a hex of sea so it goes from the edge of the island to the edge of the island now it just reaches the edge of the map and it's obviously this game is um this series and this game is perfect scale for this situation so it's a beautifully chosen situation you you can't fall off the edge of the map you can only fall into the water and that has that naturally has that result which is kind of forced in almost every other war game 
So um, this is the island of Leros. Um, the game is called Leros, the island prize. It was a Greek island and uh, it's about the German assault to capture the island in 12th to 17th of November 1943. So you have a game that potentially lasts, what's that, six days in 1943. So you've got well-seasoned German troops attacking essentially British um, uh, a British garrison with um, the remains dotted about the island on many of the, um, not a very exciting graphic, but dotted about the island on many of the high points are Italian coastal guns because the Italians... Um, by the graciousness of Hitler, had a lot of Greece or all of Greece, I don't remember which. They So they had built coastal guns to defend this. Now, it's at the point in the war where the Italians themselves have surrendered or gone over to the Allied side. And so the Germans, the, the British come in, I guess, I don't know the full story, they take over the island and the Germans, particularly Hitler, says, uh-oh, um, or the high command, the oil fields in Ploesti now, is that Romania, I think so, are threatened, our oil supply is threatened by, you know, potential landing strips and build up from this island. We've got to take it back. So they sent in the paratroopers, boats, um, and I mean like landing craft and all that to pull it back and uh, were successful historically. So you have a very exciting situation. Oh, I gotta, yes, yeah, so there's two optional rules in this game. One is that whenever you, you are landing the Falsham Jaeger um, battalion, you should play Ride of the Valkyries and hum it if you like. And then another one is you can play the theme tune for Gilligan's Island if you're bringing in the boats. I know nothing about Gilligan's Island, but the Americans of you probably do. So, um, you can see the kind of flavour you have. Um, here's here's an example of the island. It's very hilly, very mountainous. So this is the hill of Leros itself. Um, it goes up to 150 metres. There's a castle at the top. There's an old Italian, oldish Italian coastal battery here. And there's a pier here. Now, um, the Germans have... A, the scenario that I am playing is just a one map scenario. So I'm not actually playing with the top and the bottom half of the island. And I think, in fact, most of the action, even though this deliciously gives you the whole island, most of the action is going to take place in the middle because um, you have Mount Meraviglia here, which is a high point. That is a, a victory objective in like the overall campaign game. You have Mount Apache, that's a victory objective. Castle Lewis, that may or might not be, I can't remember, Ratchy Ridge. But basically this area around here is the main, uh, uh, in the scenarios, the, the main victory objectives. Also this Porto Lago, that's the biggest town, or if it's a yeah, town, that's a, a victory objective. So you don't have victory objectives here and here, but what you do have is you have peers at other places and the Germans, they desperately want these piers because only when they obtain a pier can they land their heavy weapons. Other than that, they're just shoving landing crafts up to the beach. And like here you have, this is what they call, they're called the Brandenburg Coastal Raiding Company. So that's Cust's company. You've got um, three platoons and a machine gun section. Um, they, I think they came up on this shore the night before and so um uh you know they've just created a little beachhead there but they they are hoping i guess to hold this pier and then later on some heavy weapons can be landed now over here in, in my scenario it's called the um i can't remember the power drop or something like that um the falsham jaeger battalion has landed here. I think I had their kind of like designated area here and they kind of like drifted um, around this point. So um, if we look on the um, organisation of German forces, if I can focus that. So the Falsham Jäger Regiment has uh, two battalions no, sorry, just one battalion represented in the game. And you can see they've got 
the fourth company has mortars and recoilless rifles, machine guns. That's not on the map because um, I don't know. Maybe that could be airdropped. I don't know. But um, then you've got others with like this one has infantry guns, um, anti-tank guns, um, 81 millimeter mortars, etc. They have to come in on the pier. So obviously you might. So although the objectives around here, you might you've got many days you might decide, you know, put most of your men down here where you imagine it's going to be quieter and then they have to slog their way, albeit with heavy weapons, which will obviously help, to the main objectives. Or, you know, you might try and land all around here. Um, but obviously this is the area is the hev most heavily defended. Um so uh that's that's kind of like the a broad outline of the game. Um, an interesting point in this is that normally in the TCS, I understand you have off-board artillery. You can't... I suppose any other island was too far away from Leros for that to be effective, so there's no off-board artillery. The um, Brits <coughs> excuse me, do have an artillery... Um, I don't know if it's... Well, they've got three units of uh, 25 pounder cannons there. So they do have artillery, but it's on board. So again, that's an interesting... It uh, could be an interesting target for the, the Germans. And, you know, as the Brits, you might want to stick them, you know, down there and hope that they're going to be safe. And they can still t attack anywhere on the board. Um, but... Um, uh, yeah, that... That could, that's your decision you, for the use of the rest of the terrain. So interesting terrain, interesting about the off-board artillery, that Germans are also the same. So if they can bring on their 81mm mortars, that, as I understand it, and they've got some 50... That, yeah, the mortars would operate as off-board artillery. Uh, and then also there are... The Germans have air superiority, so they get a lot... The potential for a lot of air sorties... And the British, not much at all. There's Essentially, they don't get any, as historically they didn't, unless you take in an optional roll, and then they have kind of like one chance in six per... Is it hourly turn or not? I'm not sure. Maybe it's every turn. One chance in six of tr trying out with a, a sortie. Um, otherwise, the Germans have air superiority for that moment, and there's no chance. So, um, the game... Uh, what can I say? Yes, so I think it's 1995 that this was produced. So it has in the game the version 3.1 series rules. I've actually, and you get um, two uh, charts and tables things. There's uh, two counter sheets. You can see from my scenario I'm not using so much. Essentially what you have, the British have one, two, three, four, five, six battalions. The Long Range Desert Group and the SBS are not very large at all, about six units. And the Germans have all those battalions of, as well. So potentially there's a lot of um, troops that can be contesting the island. Yes, yeah, so I um, I think I'm going to use the um, version 4. I think it's 4.1 rules now, which are downloadable off the Multiman Publishing website linked to the gamers' support pages. So these are the charts for that, and I understand there are some significant changes in the rules. Um, nothing that kind of takes it away from what people know before, but um, for example, uh, artillery and aircraft have their own um, phase within the um, game turn. So I understand before they were linked in with the action phases. Um, then there's another major difference that I... Um, read about because there's helpful information about it on that aforementioned site. One difference that they changed um, since the version 3.1 rules was that apparently you get, you can have, a, in combat you can have a losses or you might have a paralysed result or a um, save yourself action. And apparently it was in that order, so you you were more likely to be paralysed and if that your um the result was worse then you would actually flee now i understand that um in these version 4 and 4.1 rules they switched that around 
And so now you're more likely to flee and less likely to get paralyzed. And the, being paralyzed is kind of like the worst um, state. And something I don't know, because I don't have combat experience, I don't have military experience, but it struck me that the original design of the rules Dean Essig does, and he he chose that um, par- sort of, you know, unit paralysis of uh, troops is more likely to, it's going to happen more often than before they jump out and flee. Um, and it just struck me and jarred a bit as a bit arbitrary to flip it the other way around because some other kind of logic tells you, no, you're more likely to, to run away before you freeze like a frozen rabbit. And something in me says that I don't necessarily think that's the case. Um, but um, so So the rules have been developed after Dean Essig kind of sealed them at version 3.1. So that's just a question I have, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to play with fully all of 4.1, um, including that change. But I would be interested in any, any viewers' comments on that change, what they find or think about it. Now, um, within this game, there are five scenarios. Now, two of them are one-map scenarios. The one I'm playing is ten turns long. There's another one which is a night attack scenario, which is only four turns long. Then the other ones encompass all three maps, and um, they are all situated at different points within the historical campaign. So, you know, at the beginning, sort of in the middle, I think, and that towards the end, but not right at at the end. So they are all playable individually. One's a 36-turn um, scenario, but then all of them can also be taken as a full campaign. So in effect, there's um, you know, there's five um scenarios, and three of them can go forward into full campaigns from starting from those th- different points in the overall campaign. So that's interesting. So you can play this for longer than thirty six turns, as I understand it, <laughs> which um, you know, that's what potentially six days or so. Or until you come to conclusion, I guess. Um, so that's great. But um, I am only playing one map, partly because I don't have so much space. You see, I've used all this table just to show you guys how the game looks all set up. Sorry, I know it's horrible when someone just moves the camera really quick. <laughs> it's fine when we move our head really quick, but the camera makes us nauseous or something. Okay, so... Um, I don't generally I have you know sort of books and papers and stuff on the tables and, and I don't know I'm tempted now I set this up it's quite doable I could do it all but because this is my first bite of real bite of TCS I'm just going to do the middle map section um I can't remember where I was going with this oh yeah that's it but unfortunately like I said it's so there's four turns or ten turns for the two scenarios on the middle map and uh let me just put this camera down a minute so that I don't think I need to pan around all the time. Um, uh, unfortunately, the book, the game as is, doesn't supply a longer um, one map scenario because what happened was I set, I, I, I sort of thought, right, I can do this scenario because I've got the space for it. And I'm really excited about the um, orders writing and not just the orders writing because. Um, World War Two and above um, TCS games, you actually have a graphic, so you have a map in which to draw on. The NBS and the Civil War Battles ones, you just write line orders, which is an option in this game, but the, this is following a proper, uh, you know, real um, military of this type procedure. You have a map and you draw orders and pass those orders on to others via the map, I guess, or, you know, in the conference. Um, so I was really excited in, in getting my orders um, written, and I wrote up orders for the Falsium Jaegers because I understand you can have orders already implemented before a scenario begins. And I did all that, and then I, I sort of read further in the rules and, and the game and the scenario, and then I realised ten turns is not going to be enough time for any new orders to be implemented. And the Falsium Jaegers, and I think the cast folks here, they don't actually need any or, uh, written orders for 
the whole kind of period after they land. So if they land in the morning or the day, until night, you don't have to write any orders. They can roam at will, um, much like your, your other war games. Um, if they land at night, they have the whole night to roam at will. And then the beginning of the next day, you have to um, write orders. I don't know if they can start um, waited turns before that, or, or you have to start preparing the orders um, after the night or the day. But anyway, be that, so I think you understand. So I didn't actually need to write any orders for these guys. And I was very disappointed because I thought that's what I really want in, about this system and um, it's not in this doable for me right now scenario. So I looked a bit and uh, on the Board Game Geek site somebody had mentioned or somebody had asked for um, there's an operations magazine by the same company that does this game and uh, or uh, a sub company and uh, in one of those in the magazine there was a scenario for one map the centre map like as I said this is most of the action takes and it's 36 turns long so there's enough time for you to um, prepare and implement maybe two or three successive orders maybe in three or four I don't know so I thought wonderful and I very oh, I inquired and a fellow on the geek anyone else could do this if they look on the Liros page on Board Game Geek, you could ask me, I'm Ajit Wagip, the last um, fellow on that thread, um, I can send you these as a fellow nicely sent me. So that's a sixth scenario that comes with the game, a one mapper uh, with the possibility of implementing several successions of orders. So um, I'm going to play this as a learning game and then um, I might do all map now that I've set it up sooner, or I might go for that one mapper, depending on what else I have to do on this table in the meantime. So that's great. Um, I don't know, have you got a good, interesting picture there? Um, let's move up to the edge. Or maybe if I tip it a bit more, you can see a bit more about what's going on. Um, so um, these markers are dug in. You don't have to put dug in markers on everyone because their pre-prepared orders are for the Brits to be all dug in. And I say the Brits but you've got Irish here and Buffs. I think Buffs might be Scottish, I don't know. Um, so essentially I've got, what you have is you have uh, three companies of Falsham Jaegers, uh, one company of the Coastal Invasion Group against um, sort of an Irish battalion, the Kent battalion, the King's battalion, a machine gun battalion with long range desert route and special boat service folks, which I put down here. So um, the invaders are outnumbered, but they have mobility because um, the Germans have a, um, what's the word for it there? Their preparedness is three, um, which means they can implement them, their orders quicker, um, quite quickly. Uh, it's on a scale of one to six, and one being the best. And the British theirs is five. Uh, I don't know the actual term. Sorry, preparedness. Let's say it is five, um, and they always they never get a reduction in this um, game for staff, um, so they're always going to be at least six. Um, for that um, implementing procedure, which means they're going to be very slow. It's going to take a lot of way to turns before they can change their orders. And so in this, you know, they are prepared. Um, they are in a prepared defence dug in. Um, so they are probably going to more or less stay where they are. And it's a bit of a concern because you can see a lot of their forces had to set up within so many hexes of hex over here. So they had set up down here. So essentially, I'm not sure, I haven't read enough of the rules, but I'm not sure, um, I think, I don't know if they, if they can move over here at all. They might only be able to provide support, i.e. with, there's lots of mortars down here. And then of course the artillery, and the machine gun section here. So um, uh, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, um, victory points 
and um, essentially who holds the balance of that wins the game and you have a massive victory if you gain all five um, wins this scenario uh, yeah I don't know what more to say usefully I felt like I had more to say but you know what it's like so um, maybe I'll just show there's the Cuts company and they're attacking a coast there's a cliff here and then there's um you have sea irish folks here on that's a coastal gun position there i believe and a machine gun section here and then so move moving over you have the castle of leros here which I've just put anti-aircraft guns and um, an anti-tank gun there. I don't know how wise that was. Anti-tank gun here. Then you've got the Long Range Desert Group and the SBS. They also don't ever need orders written or implemented for them. They do whatever they like. <laughs> That's the kind of guys they were. Um, we've got Mount Maravilla Hill here, which is quite heavily defended. And... Um, Ratchy Ridge here, there's a coastal gun there, and then you've got um, this town of Quaranta is a, a, an object of some reason. Um, now, um, so what I'm going to do is, um, I also, with the game, one thing which is a bit strange, um, with this, the game, in the um, game specific rules you have, um, these are the sheets and you can see you've got a map of the whole island but you, you can see that the um, the central portion which I'm playing on here is quite small so um, it's too small really to delineate quite accurately what you're doing so it sounds like you're just using broad strokes so you know you might say fifth battalion Irish battalion here move move there and you've got a very broad swathe of um, hexes in which to perform that operation. But I understand that um, normally orders for this kind of thing were a bit more um, stringent. You know, it's kind of like move in that 100-yard corridor sort of thing. So I, I was a bit frustrated that that was such a small graphic um, to write exciting orders on. Fortunately, on the support pages, you do get this graphic, um, which is a lot bigger. So I'm fighting on essentially this bottom section and um, really only just here where all the action is going to take place. I mean, I wish this was more blown up. I might obviously could try it myself. So here's the, the op sheets that I drew. Up. I'm quite excited about it. The... Um, Fallschirm Jaegers were destined to land around here and um, I split them up so one platoon's to go here which is to Quaranta. Let's put this the right way. So one's going to come here to contest, well to take Quaranta, that being a victory objective and then the other two are to go in a fancy to split up so it's a bit of a pincer movement because um, to take either valley Sorry, to take either valley on the side of Ratchy Ridge and then up onto the ridge to take that. So that are their initial objectives. So, you know, that this is just going to be my pre my, my pre game game planning, my thoughts of what the Germans will do. So I don't these will not be treated as implemented op sheets in this scenario, but it's nevertheless useful for that pre game planning. Then um, I had the Cursed Company, they're here, and they go that far. So they're here, and they want to go here and essentially take out the coastal gun there on Mount Apache. Then their next objective, I even drew up in, to prepare for, what do you call it, you know, like unimplemented orders to gain weight, um, ready to, be pre to go into weighted turns. Um, uh, the suitable point. I drew up the next um, set of op sheets. Normally, you 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 have um, one um, operation per op sheet, 
But I figured these, you know, I'm doing it just for myself. I don't have to worry about someone I'm playing against being really confused by my scribbles. So I, I've just put them all on the same. That's not a normal practice. Um, so um, what I decided was that they would take there, then they would go and take there. And then these guys, having taken that and that, they were boldly, um, I think these ones were going to move out and kind of, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, they were, they were going to move out and, and sweep. Once they've taken um, Quaranta, they're going to sweep round here to um, effectively kind of pin units that might want to come and take back this or this. And then um, um, they were just going to, they were going to take that and move on to that. And then the fellows who had taken Mount Apache, um, no, sorry, who had taken Rachi Ridge, we're going to move on to um, Mount Meraviglia there in a... Uh, I think I was just going to leave someone behind, but anyway, they're going to move in a phase here um, and then phase attack up into the... up from this side. So that's the basic thoughts for the invaders and the defenders there in their, their positions. Um, I actually stuck, drew up some op sheets for them, which essentially just shows these are their um, um, dug in, uh, what's it, uh, prepared defensive positions. And uh, and then I didn't get any further because that was at that point that I realised they wouldn't have time to implement any other new op sheet. So that's going to be the battle. I um. Depending on sort of, I think I feel kind of obliged really um, to give some update on how this goes, seeing as I've introduced it. But um, in case I don't, apologies. And I hope this has been an introduction, uh, A, slightly to the TCS series, but B, mainly to the, this Leros game. And. Um, um, I'll kind of leave it at that. What more can I say? Yeah, you, these boxes, you might be wondering what they're for. You've got boxes over there um, and and here. I think that's the only two there, essentially. So you have units come from Samos. I think so that's that's British sea movement track. So they can bring reinforcements. You decide when the reinforcements start. Then every turn they move a box in. And depending on whether they have a chance to abort and or... Um, Proceed entry at various. See, there's these numbers give various uh, entry points along the coasts, so you can go in and you know continue. You might abort and come back out. Then you have to wait. They have to if they abort, they have to travel all the way back. So it takes a number of turns before they can kind of refigure and come back out again. So you have to have that consideration. You've got you know the weather. You could be unlucky with the weather, or if you're the Amer Germans, sorry, and you're doing that, you have pe people come from Cos and Athens. Um, no, sorry, the Athens box is for the um, paratroopers, so that's for paradrops. The Cos box is for units by boat. Um, they might get shot at by coastal gunfire, so that you can use lose units by boat, and you might find that you hadn't taken out the coastal gun that you were hoping your boats are, you know, almost landing. Some get shot up, so you abort the rest. They have to go all the way back before they can come back out again. So that is going to be a very interesting feature of the whole campaign game. You can see how you would get a real flavour of this tiny world and the invasion coming in upon it and then the desperate defence out from it. Um... So, yes, I, I guess that's all I have to say. I hope that's enough. If you have any comments and or any requests, please do list them under the, the video and I'll see what I can do to satisfy them. Um, and I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to play this. It will probably be the odd hour here and there on the evenings as and, as and when I can. So it would take... A while before there might be any update to this, but um, if people r really want it, then I I would be quite happy to oblige. If no one's that bothered, then I might not bother. <laughs> you know how it 
is. Um, on the other hand, if I have a spare moment like I've had now, which I haven't had for a long time, um, and I'm really excited about the game, I could just um, film content anyway. I mean, you don't really want to hear about my mumblings. You want to look at war games. So, Leros, the Island Prize. 